Hello and welcome to another tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to make this evolving sidechain strings pad using Serum and Ableton Live. Before we start, I have Serum presets and samples available in the description along with the free preset for this tutorial. And don't forget to like and subscribe as it helps get my videos out to more people. The pad I'm showing you today is very versatile. I'm using it in a future garage or breaks context, but it can work well for rave music, drum and bass, and even trance. I have some chords here, but using single note drones, particularly at the end of a section or during a breakdown, can work well in bass house or bass line too. So we can start by adding a new MIDI track, dragging in a new instance of Serum. We can color code the channel, rename it, drag the MIDI onto the new channel, and we can delete the previous instance of Serum. We'll also want to turn the channel down to avoid any clipping. So we've got Serum open here. We're going to choose an analog sawtooth waveform. So select the basic mini from the analog drop down menu. It's a sawtooth by default. We we'll want to increase the unison to 16 to get that wide detuned effect. I'm going to initialize the filter because the sound is quite bright, but we'll come back to this later. Next, I'll start to create the amp envelope. You don't have to be too precise here, but you do want to ensure the sound has a slow attack, long decay, and long release. The slow attack and long release times are the most important as we want the pad to fade in and out slowly. I'll tend to decrease the sustain a little as well. Now we can add the sidechain effect. Go to LFO1, select SC1 from the sidechains drop down in the envelope menu. Change LFO1 to trigger mode so it continually re triggers while MIDI notes are being played. I'm going to use LFO1 to modulate the level of oscillator A to create a pumping sensation. You might have noticed the slight pops caused by the modulation. And we can use the smooth within LFO1 to make this less apparent. Now I'm going to use LFO2 to modulate the filter cutoff using a slow rate. And again, we want trigger mode. We can change the rate to four bar and drag LFO2 to the filter cutoff. We can then tweak the filter cutoff and the modulation amount to taste. I'm going to introduce some FM synthesis to this patch just to give it a bit more movement. So we'll initialize oscillator B. We'll choose the analog BD sign from the analog drop down menu. We'll want to turn the level all the way down. Now we can go back to oscillator A, choose FM from B, turn the unison on oscillator B up to 16, and drag LFO2 to modulate the FM from B knob. We'll adjust this to taste in the mix.
Hopefully you can hear how adding and removing the FM element helps the pad feel more dynamic. We'll add some noise now. So we'll initialize the noise. Choose the bright white from the analog drop down menu. Drag LFO1 to the level as we did with oscillator A. And we can tweak the modulation amount in the mix. I'll ensure that the noise is routed to the filter, but this isn't something you have to do. I'm going to use some distortion within Serum to add grittiness to the sound. Click on the effects tab and choose distortion. We can change the filter to post and push the drive up until we start to hear the distortion. Let's tweak this in the mix. Then we can turn the mix knob down. So we're effectively parallel processing. This is everything inside Serum done. Now let's do some processing on the channel strip. I'm going to drag in a drum bus and turn everything down to zero with the damp up to 20 kilohertz. Even though I'm not driving anything in the drum bus, it still provides some mild saturation and tames the high end a little. Next, we can drag in an EQ8. Remove some low ends, particularly as the noise oscillator in Serum adds beta frequencies. So here I've EQ'd below the fundamental and I'm gonna cut some whistly frequencies at around 1.5K. I'll then add an auto filter just to make this pad even deeper by filtering out above four kilohertz. You might not want to do this if you want a brighter sound. I'm also going to use the LFO in the auto filter to add slightly more movement. We can add a utility with the bass mono turned up to 500. And I'm also narrowing the sound slightly because it's very wide. You could add chorus, but as I just said, this sound is already very wide. For the final touch, we have some reverb on send A and some delay on send B and we're going to send some signal to both of these. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.